Topic. Could it be the year of the Drago? We'll have to see. Let's take a look at these prize cards between our players as we have Bastion Lamont on the left side here as well. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of an issue there with some of that prizing. The mochi is going to be important if you want to get some of that additional damage down. But other than that, not terrible. And same for Robin. We see one, one copy of that Mew EX to draw some additional resources. But all in all, not too bad. Yep, you see that Charmeleon there, that kind of hints to what Bastion's going to be playing here, that Charizard EX deck. I'm so excited to see this face-off. This is kind of a staple face-off that we've been waiting to see here, Kyle. How does Charizard compete against Reggie Drago? On paper, how do you think it shakes out, Kyle? It, it depends. The style that you build your Charizard EX uh, to be can completely change the style of the matchup. If you have uh, copies of that Dusknor line, then perhaps you can get some earlier knockouts before your opponent's prepared for that. But uh, if we see Robin take an early knockout, there's always that opportunity for Bastion to yeah. sneak in some additional damage with that self-poison and uh, that binding mo mochi as well. And we saw that in the prize cards this time around, so maybe that first prize card would be a little difficult for Bastion. Well, we're going to kick things off here in our round one at the World Championships on the trading card game table. I'm psyched to get into this as we see the Rotom V starting here on our screen in the active position, as well as that Reggie Drago V in the active for Robin. We're going to start off with this Earthen Vessel, discarding that Curum straight away to get these energy out. Yeah, look at these Pokemon coming to life here on the main stage as we see that Earthen Vessel. And of course, searching out some of those energies, but most importantly in this deck, the importance of finding the discard pile for these specific attackers. That Kiram has the ability to deal so much damage yes. at certain points in this matchup. If you can ever chain together two of those attacks, you're basically taking six prize cards in a turn. Yeah, exactly. This is a brand new card that we've added in from Shrouded Fable as we see here. And it's going to the discard because that Reggie Drago V-Star is able to copy its move Try Frost pretty much for its own energy uh, requirements there. So that's already in the discard pile. It is looking threatening here for any sort of evolution deck. And Bastion does have those low HP Pokemon to start out, starting with the Rotom V in the active and is going to have that Buddy Buddy pop in, bring in some of those low HP Pokemon out, 70 HP or less being drawn out of the deck now. Yeah, not nearly as threatening as a turn as it could have been for Robin. We didn't see any of those Teal Mask Ogre Pond and the additional draws that come along with that. And for Bastion, this is a pretty solid start. Not only do you have the Rotom V to guarantee three additional cards at the end of this turn, yeah. you have the Buddy Buddy Poffin. It looks like there's a Nest Ball as well and multiple energies. So the hand could certainly play out fairly well here. Yeah, we need to see the setup here. We need to see the consistency from Bastion, and we're seeing that so far. Uh, the Buddy Buddy Poffin bringing out those two Charmander onto the bench now for us, as well as a Nest Ball. Going to bring another basic Pokemon out <laughs> here, and it's the Mana Fee! You, you think Bastion's read the cards on the other side? Yeah. I think there's no surprises when you see that Kiram in the, in the discard. <laughs> Absolutely not. The cards are on the table here, Kyle, <laughs> that is for sure. And that does help. I mean, the cards do have to go into the discard pile, so it does give you a little bit of a lead up here. I'm going to protect my bench here with the Wave Veil ability on this Mana Fee, uh, prevent that damage to the bench Pokemon. Those Charmanders are having a good time on the bench here so far. Energy attachment to the Rotom V in the active position now here for that pivot that we're going to see. Manaphy joining us in the active position now. We're still churning through this turn. Yeah, Manaphy, of course, uh, solid Pokemon to promote at this point. It's already doing its job, so <laughs> leave it alone. Let it, let it handle this, and Charmanders need to be protected at all costs, along with that Rotom V. There was not much going on in that hand, and <laughs> certainly now the question is <laughs> even more as we see the Iono played. Exactly. We saw that instant charge ending the turn there off that Rotom V for Bastion, and then Robin Schultz is just going to mix those cards up. They're going to be put at the bottom of each other's decks, or not each other's decks, their own decks here, That's and they're going to draw for each prize card still remaining for each player. So these are new hands for both of our players off of that <gasps> Iono. Let's see what we can find. Ooh, there's a lot going on here. This might actually be the Wombo combo. Sure enough, the Earthen Vessel, the Energy Switch, Ultra Ball, if if that if the Teal Mask Ogre Pond is involved in this, then certainly you have the energy accelerated. I guess the one piece missing now is you don't have that Reggie Drago 
Drago V -star, v Star to go along with it. But you could really just go for it at this point and use your V Star ability and throw cards left and right if you see an opportunity to take some prize cards early. Legacy Star, the V Star uh, ability there on that Reggie Drago V Star once it comes out of the woodwork. Discard seven cards out of the top of your deck, and then you get to choose two to put back into your hand. And they don't have to be from the ones just discarded, it's just in your discard pile at, all, uh, at the start. I mean, you can have explosive turns here from the start, or you can use that uh, ability further in the match as well to almost duplicate resources down the line. It really depends on what you're trying to do, how explosive you're trying to be here in the start for Robin Schultz. And we're going to see what happens now that this Ultra Ball is uh, coming down onto the field. Yeah, this is one piece where maybe that Mew being in the prize cards is difficult. So, yeah, the ability to refresh your hand and draw some additional resources. It doesn't look like the cards you could select from the discard pile would be that helpful in this situation uh, with all of the discarding that goes on with Ultra Ball, with Earthen yeah. Vessel. So at this point, you'd like to be able to add a little more resources to the hand and just not seeing it. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's not a hugely combo deck, but you do have a lot of resources you have to pull together on these turns uh, coming up in the future. And like you said, Kyle, good point. We still don't have that Ogre Pond, which is a huge part of this deck, out on the field yet for Robin Schultz. Um, that's going to accelerate the energy onto the field, draw you more cards for that consistency for your deck. You have energy switches in there to kind of throw energy around to be able to use multiple attackers or tank a Reggie Drago V-Star down the line. And uh, at least we're going to see this Reggie Drago V-Star, and it's the rainbow one. Love to see it. Well, now the question is, you, we, of course, we see the canceling cologne in hand, too. This could have been an incredible turn. Oh, yes. If we see the ability for that Teal Mask Ogre Pond, I, we're, <laughs> we need some help. Oh, my gosh. This is the legacy. The star power that we see here. I mean, at this point, what was it? Just a nest ball yeah. would have would have gotten the job done. Nest ball plus earthen vessel. Oh my god. Would have would have pieced together the canceling cologne double knockout onto the Charmanders. Yeah, the Curum's already in the discard pile that is secured here, but Robin Schultz unfortunately wow. not able to get there. Look at all these cards in the discard pile, but this is truly the vulnerability of using this V-Star power so early in the game. You don't know what you're going to be discarding, and you might not land those oh, resources you need. That's so brutal. Still Looking choosing for... these two cards out off of here. You get to choose two, but then that's it. V-Star power is used for this entire game. Of course, it's not over yet. We ha I mean, we haven't seen much else. The, we see the supporter now added to the, to the hand, but this is... Big trouble missing out on that opportunity. Just wow. has a pass of the turn. Yes, next turn, there's a great setup. But there's a problem. Bastion knows how to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, Kyle. And Arvin is one key piece to that here. Searching out an item card and a tool card for Bastion, as we see. And that rare candy being eyed up straight away, as well as that four seal stone. This is how Charizard EX decks work. They are definitely combo decks. They put all of these pieces together to get you into your Charizard EX, accelerate those energies with its ability, Infernal Rain, and then we are slamming these Pokemon with a ton of damage coming up. Yeah, this, I mean, the, the hand right here, not much going on, but thank goodness for Arvin, as this is, going to save everything at this point. The Ultra Ball yes. will line up to find that Charizard EX. The Rare Candy's in hand, and now the Forest Seal Stone as well for one more additional resource that maybe we'll wait to see until next turn. But thankfully, there's something going on here because there's a lot of Pokemon and a Buddy Buddy Poffins going on in that hand. We don't need basic Pokemon here. We need to start putting on some pressure. Yeah, absolutely. We do need that pressure here, Kyle. And we'll see what Bastion decides to do with this turn, bringing out the Bidoof here onto the field for that future Beeparel to uh, add that extra support down the line with the Industrious Incisor's ability uh, in the future here for Bastion. Yeah, this is uh, an interesting turn now that we see for Bastion, as you have two options. You can either stay with a very thin board that doesn't uh, spread out like this, that isn't susceptible as much to the Kiram, 
or you can commit all these resources, also apply the pressure yeah. of the Charizard, and just say, pick one of these options. If you ignore Charizard for too long, you're going to be facing some bad news. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty solid plan here. You want to play into your consistency as much as possible so that you have answers in the late game here, especially because Robin Schultz hasn't had the best turns. This is definitely not as fast as Reggie Drago decks uh, usually work here, and Bastion is able to still uh, accelerate these energies down now that we have that Charizard EX evolving, so we're at least getting uh, all of the pieces really needed here for Bastion, and then also establishing that later game setup as well is going to be huge, I think. Yeah, the difference here is that there's really a one-turn clock for Robin to take advantage on that mana fee. With the Prime Catcher in yeah. hand, with uh, the pr professor's research that was found as well, you know that Robin wants to play this en entire handout, grab the mana fee, and then take the knockouts with the Kirim. So if you wait one turn, maybe he has to throw away all those resources, and then you can take advantage of this. But we're going to see the wide board, and this is now that opportunity for Robin that we've been talking about. Can he capitalize and take multiple knockouts here while also still retaining some semblance of a board? Yes, that is what we need to see. We're just seeing that burning darkness now. Bastion applying that pressure to that Reggie Drago V-Star. But it's on the bench here now after that prime catcher from Robin Schultz. The A-Spec has been used here so far. We're going to see the energy attachment canceling Cologne as well being used before this professor's research to draw us into another fresh hand of seven cards. Yeah, and you see the strategy here for Robin is targeting down two prize Pokemon one at a time, starting with that Rotom V, just work your way through the Rotom, then likely two Charizards to get the job done. Using a lot of resources to get to this point with the double energy switch, but finally, the first Teal Mask Ogre Pond ready to roll, and maybe we can see some drawing here, because it's, it's been a tough go. Yeah, I know it's actually so sad to see. There's been so much debate online whether uh, Reggie Drago is super ultra consistent or absolutely inconsistent. What, where do you fall on that, Kyle? <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if the light is shined on you, then you're going to have a great day. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's about where it is. It, it, it selects which player it wants to do well. And uh, yes. Robin maybe needs to take a look again. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we saw the nest ball there, I would have certainly said it's, it's happening once more, crown another world champion. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. It's such a powerful deck, but sometimes things just don't tend to go your way, especially after that legacy V-Star just absolutely whiffing the resources needed. The Manaphy was so close in the active position, but now it's back onto the bench here. Rodan V, of course, in the active off of that prime catcher from Robin Schultz. Uh, with that Reggie, Dr Reggie Drago V-Star fully loaded up now here. And uh, Robin Schultz still has some more play here. We see that Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX that's going to be benched now coming up for Robin Schultz. The, uh, the grass is already in the hands here as well to draw additional cards. But I think it's just going to make sure to keep track of all these resources already utilized as well as the Pokemon that are in the discard pile that are able to be used as far as attacks go. Absolutely. And we see here the Hisuian Gudra V-Star, a solid attack to use in this spot, yeah. knocking out the Rotom, but also with that added bit of protection that you have, reducing 80 damage from your opponent on the following turn. Potentially going to save Reggie Drago from some big issues. Yeah, we saw that. Kapow, the Rotom V goes down with just enough damage there from that Hisuian Gudra's attack being duplicated there on that Reggie Drago V star. And that is two prize cards now for Robin Schultz heading into this turn from Bastion. We see the Ultra Ball starting us off, discarding two Pokemon here in that Pidgey as well as the Charmander. Yeah, and this is why you play different lines. We see, of course, now the Beaver Roll is ready to be added into the mix, but also Fezzendipity is there too. If you want to draw even more cards after the Beaver Roll, certainly could see plenty of options. The issue that comes along with that is Benching another two prize Pokemon in this spot yeah, doesn't true. sound fun. Doesn't really sound that fun. I agree with you there, Kyle. But hey, at least we're going to see some extra draw support now that that Beaverell is out onto the field. That little Bidoof evolved. It has a whole stack of sticks now, and it is ready to draw some cards here for Bastion. As we see that coin being placed uh, using that industrious incisor's ability, as you see displayed on our screen here. So that is going to draw into some extra cards. Let's see what we get in this hand. Oh, uh, well, there's a little more help. That stick was pretty good. <laughs> Countercatcher oh, nice. to help out. 
line up that knockout on the benched, damaged Reggie Drago V-Star. And now the issue. <laughs> Uh-oh. This hand still isn't great. <laughs> no. No, we're lacking consistency here. But hey, I still believe in this Charizard EX. We'll have to see what happens here. But at least we're going to take some prize cards uh, and still continue to keep up the pace, but still slightly behind, especially if after kind of how this game started. I'm a bit surprised we're seeing both players whiff a little bit here. Yeah, the team yells cheer to help out maybe and add to some of that consistency. Yeah. Just a single Arvin at this point, but maybe it finds its way back to the top. <laughs> maybe, maybe down the line. Bastion gonna shuffle up here now as that Charizard EX sits in the active position. We still have that Charmander loaded up with one energy on the bench as well. How do you think our players are feeling right now, Kyle? This is our round one world championships. They're in the stream match. Do you think they're a bit nervous? Honestly, I'm not seeing it. I don't see the, the shaky hands that go along with it. No major misplays as well. Both players are doing a great job of showing off the power of their decks. It's just been missing draws for the most part. <laughs> if you can find a little more help off the top of the deck, like maybe this Teal Mask Ogre Pond could find, then perhaps there's an ability to take a big knockout. And as we say, that Raging Bolt added into the mix. Maybe that's the Pokemon that can get the job Woo! done here. Yeah, we just need a way to discard. And look at that Ultra Ball, the perfect card here to discard both of those Pokemon in the Raging Bolt, as well as that Dragapult going into the discard pile. That's a lot more to work with here for Robin Schultz on this turn. Of course, Bastion did go down two prize cards after knocking out that Reggie Drago V-Star. So we are tied up currently in the prize cards. It's on Robin Schultz now to keep up this pace, take some more prize cards for this turn, and put on as much pressure as possible. Yep. Adding those energies to the board, big for this spot, the Teal Mask Ogre Ponds. If you can chain them together, maybe find two, three of these Pokemon along with the Grass Energy, keep the ball rolling. It leads into a Bellowing Thunder that can easily take a knockout on this Charizard. The problem is, how many energy can you keep on board? Can you retain a threat after this? And yeah. it looks like there's probably a chance there with that energy switch that can be held onto. Yep, those energy being accelerated onto those Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX to draw additional cards as well. All of this energy are out on the field to take a giant knockout here. It's 70 damage for each energy that you discard off of this Bellowing Thunder that's going to be copied by the Reggie Draco V-Star. I just don't know if you can do it at this point, though. The, the prize cards, when you give up this many prizes, you see on the other end, the Burning Darkness just continues to grow. A rare candy Charizard That's away true. from Bastion, taking a return knockout and just facing off against a couple. Teal Mask, I like that, those odds there. Yeah, exactly, the Teal Mask Ogre Pond, such a great supporter Pokemon, but it is only 210 HP and that is plenty. Uh, they're the charge are hitting plenty to knock that out what? pretty easily. Look there. at this! Is that the energy switch? Energy switch over to the Teal Mask. Wow. This has two attackers ready to go. Yeah, trying to get some sort of recovery here, I guess, from this Robin Schultz's side. Safety first. Do we just go <laughs> back to Gutra? Yeah, that might be what we see here, see here from Robin Schultz, kind of looking through the discard pile at these Pokemon that are there. Don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know it is a bit scary when you're playing against Reggie Draco and you see those Pokemon start to hit the discard pile and you know that your time is just ticking when you play against this deck. And I gotta say, I've played a lot of this matchup being the Charizard EX and I have usually not had a great time it's at all. It's really <laughs> difficult. If, if you see the Reggie Drago player continue to draw into all of the right pieces, find the basics yeah. to follow suit, we're basically uh, one Reg Reggie Drago away from the game being sealed. If that Pokemon's exactly. on the board, then Robin's in a great spot, but he's going to full send. 350 damage for the there huge knockout. There we go. A clean knockout here on that Charizard EX. One shot down from a ton of HP here, being knocked off the field. Down two prize cards now for Robin Schultz. Only two left to take, but look at the board say All of this energy to the discard pile hits a ton of damage. 70 for each energy, but now we're just left with the Regi Regidrago V-Star in the active and a nice little grass energy on that Teal Mask Ogre on the bench. I'm excited to see what that recovery looks like when we come back to Robin Schultz's turn. But for now, we're on Bastion's side of the field, the Manaphy being promoted into the active. Yeah, what a world's difference we could have seen 
from Robin if maybe the opening attack was with that Kiram taking three prize cards in that opening turn, then just need one remaining prize card. I'd feel a lot better if Teal Mask needed to just take one prize than two. Two prize cards here seems pretty difficult. Yeah, that's uh, going to require quite a bit of energy there. Will we be able to see uh, the retrievals happen? Uh, but Buddy Buddy Poffin going into the deck here now from Bastion. Jamming Tower as well as our stadium here now. I love that little graphic. We see where we're at here, Kyle. We're in the Jamming Tower. Help! Help! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. But Buddy Buddy Poppin going to shuffle up the deck here. Nothing being sought out off of the Buddy Buddy Poppin, but we get a quick look at the resources, and now we're reshuffling here. That Buddy Buddy Poppin going into the discard. Nobody's going to be munching down on it today. So many questions still need to be Ooh. answered. Beaverdale trying to help out just three cards at a time. Yeah, and look at that. We see the bench of the Petarunt EX. This is a brand new card for us as well. Are you surprised to see that bench, Kyle? It helps at this point. Honestly, you might be running low on energies to retreat, so an opportunity to promote this Pokemon, regardless of the poisoning effect, could be beneficial. Just looking for a little more help here, and Pheasantipity trying to do just that. We saw the Arvin in hand, so maybe just that Ultra Ball or even drawing into that Pokemon itself, the Charizard EX could help here. Exactly. Pheasantipity going to be able to draw some extra cards here from Bastion. We're going to see uh, how our first flip the script goes here, Kyle. All <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> flip the script. That is the ability here. Drawing three additional cards here for Bastion into the hand. What do you see? Charizard! We see the Charizard coming down here. The EX being drawn off that Pheasantipity. It's going well so far. All right. Let's uh, keep flipping those scripts. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly need Truly. it here as the script had Robin lined up as the winner yes. if it weren't for this combination. Arvin to find the rare candy. Energies to go along with this should be in the deck. And Charizard will be the active Pokemon at the end of this turn, taking a big knockout here. Exactly. That burning darkness move on that Charizard EX, that Terra type Charizard. It's 180 damage base, but then it adds 30 additional damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. So as the game continues, your Charizard only gets stronger, angrier, oh. and ready to strike down the line. And Bastion is in that key spot here for that damage. It can take huge knockouts. And uh, we're, we're seeing the pieces be put together thanks to that Arvin first up for Bastion. Just taking a quick look at the resources uh, in the discard pile from Robin Schultz. And then now going into the deck, getting that rare candy out here for Bastion. Yeah, Charizard, uh, he was born in the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to attack. And sure enough, this is a terrifying sight to go along with the beauty of some of the cards that I've seen. Have you yes. read some of the uh, European cards that we have to feature here? I with saw, the yeah. Pepper, like, Arvin, and the Super Bonbon bon Rare Candy. I would, oh, yes. I, what it's Whoa. like to be a European playing on the main stage. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> yeah, I know. Super Bonbon bon is probably my favorite <laughs> Top tier. tier. But look at this. We actually see the Charmeleon come into play Ooh. off of this uh, this Charmander. It's going to hard evolve into the stage one Charmeleon. And that is going to be I, it, passing the turn over to Robin Schultz now. I wonder if the energies weren't there. The, oh, at this point, we've, we saw a few to retreat uh, along the course of the opening of the game. If there's any in the prize cards, perhaps. Uh, it's just the six energies typically in the list. Wow, Maybe well, not enough to get the job done. I'll tell you what, superior energy, energy retrieval is going to make sure Robin Schultz is not lacking any energy here. Discarding two cards, getting all four energy out of the discard pile, and those are going to be re-accelerated straight away off of this teal dance on this Ogre Pond EX. We're dancing on the bench here, Kyle. <laughs> we're drawing some cards. We're throwing some grass energy around. We're having a good time. There's a lot of reasons to dance right now. One of them is not the Reggie Drago in the active spot. That's a big Pokemon, and you need to find a way to attack with something relevant in this spot. I'm uh, I'm thinking it might be teal time, but is there a boss's orders plus a switch to go along with this to knock out that Charmeleon? Yeah, we're going to have to see the Radiant Charizard was being drawn out as well here for Robin Schultz being benched down now. That late game attacker, single prize Pokemon as well. Uh, but we're going to see some more draw here. Grass coming down onto that second Teal Mask Ogre Pond. We have a third Teal Mask Ogre Pond 
And it's going to be accelerated straight away. Let's see what this card is drawn for Robin. Oh, the energy switch. Nice. There we go. Fire energy coming down onto this Reggie Drago V-Star in the active position here now. The energy switch that we just saw drawn here. Oh, these are such vital resources, of course. Holding on to the energy switch can be vital if you want the Teal Mask Ogre Pond to take a knockout on a Pokemon like that Charizard and take advantage of that grass weakness. Yeah. So it's going to slow down at this point past the turnover. Oh, this is getting scary. I know, we're seeing these passes from both players. It's like we're playing a 5D chess here right now between uh, both of them. They have the skill to be doing that though, Kyle. We're gonna see another turn here for Bastion after that pass there from Robin Schultz, but the pressure is really mounting here from Robin's side of the field. As you said, the, the grass weakness from that Ogre Pond EX being uh, really scary when you are a dark type, Terra type Pokemon in that Charizard EX. So. What do you think Bastion does from here? Yeah, there's, I mean, obviously, you want to have the Charizard to attack with. You need to continue to take knockouts. Your board state completely reliant on the Charizard at this point in time. Yeah. There's no Radiant Charizard to sneak into the mix. Uh, the bench space just isn't available. Yeah, the problem yeah. is, which of these Pokemon is the biggest threat at this point? And do you have the cards to take it down? Boss's orders, yes, but we haven't seen the fire energy yet. Exactly, yeah, let's see. We're taking a look at the deck There's right one now. Fire There's left. one single fire left here. Ultra Ball discarding two cards to grab that Pidgeot EX. That Pidgey has been lone on the bench here for this entire game. And uh, can we finally see it become a Pidgeot EX? Potentially, yes, but that goes... Well, yes, yeah, so we see the rare candy to go along with that now. Oh, yeah, that's why we have the Charmeleon ready to go for the Charizard next turn. Pidgeot EX joining the fields now. Going to allow Bastion to get another resource out of the deck here off of that quick search. Now the question is, is there an opportunity for a card like Professor Turo to open up that bench space, include the Radiant Charizard as an attacker? But at this point, you're not attacking into a knockout. You have that Reggie Drago that you have to work into the 280 hit points. Yeah, this is getting sticky, Kyle. I am not disappointed by our first match here. <laughs> there is Prime Catcher, so there's a world where Beaverl just draws into all the great stuff. Oh, we're going to see an Industrious Incisors here. Let's see what is drawn for Bastion. Super Rod for some help. The Radiant Charizard to go along with it. I suppose the last card missing was the Prime Catcher to take a relevant two-prize knockout with a one-prize Pokemon at this stage of the game. But you're asking for so much. Pidgeot can search for one of the pieces, either the Turo or the Prime Catcher. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Trying to piece it together here from Bastion's side, but coming up just a little bit short. Yeah. Looks like eyeing up the Iono at the front of the deck here. Does see that Prime Catcher that's in the deck. It's going to be chosen now for Bastion off of that quick search. Yep, if you use the Prime Catcher and target Ooh. down that uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond with the two energies on it and hopefully don't see that again. But Iono seems like the, the better play. choice here. You need your opponent to have no energies off the top three at this stage of the game. Exactly. If that happens, there is a world where Radiant or uh, Charizard EX just roams free and it's going to pause for now. Yep, there we go. It's just going to be a pass of the turn now over to Robin Schultz. Both of these players taking things nice and slow, making sure they want to secure uh, their potential win here from either side of the field. I got to say, I, uh, I didn't expect it to be going this long for these two decks. Yep, <laughs> this is a, a spot that you don't see too often yeah. where players just pass over the turn back and forth, waiting for that right opportunity, the right cards to be in hand for a combo like that boss's orders, along with the switching effect, the energy switch, whatever it may be. We're so close at this point. This yeah. might be the turn for Robin now. Multiple energies, triple Ogre Pond, along with the final energy switch. If a boss's orders is found here, easy knockout on a two prize Pokemon. Exactly. Here we go. Exactly. Two prize cards, all we have left to take on Robin Schultz's side of the field. A lot of energy in the hand here. But do we have it? It was just an earthen vessel now drawn off of that Teal Mask Ogre Pond. We're going to see another draw here. Can we get it? Luminion. Oh, there we go. Luminion, we got the bench space, there. Right? There's the bench space. Bench Boss's space. orders should be found here, and there it is. <laughs> Big find. All the resources lining up perfectly in this opening game. 
final energy switch to go. Pick your poison. Either way, you yes. have a game one victory here. <laughs> exactly. That Luminion was exactly what Robin Schultz needed. Being benched, using Luminous Sign, getting that boss's orders, having the energy here to discard. Robin Schultz is going to take those last prize cards here. Wow. Yeah, 28 minutes to get to that point. That is not what you expect when you see two powerhouse decks going at it no. at the opening round. But there's still an opportunity for a solid game two here. Worried about a game three. But game from our players now starting a little bit differently this time. The Charmander is the active position here for Bastion, kicking off the turn with a Buddy Buddy Poppin. These are the prize oh, cards. Oh, yeah. Yep, I, uh, I saw a little bit of that there. The pink is terrifying to witness, yeah. that prime catcher in the prize cards, that Radiant Charizard as well that we've seen be so important in mixing up some of that prize mapping. But I can't complain here. Opening turn, Buddy Buddy, uh, let's go. Yeah, exactly. You love to see it. The Buddy Buddy Poppin, Charmander, the Pidgey coming out. They are hungry here. They're munching down on the Buddy Buddy Poppins. We're going to see the Ultra Ball as well, discarding some resources here from Bastion. It's going to be one of those fire energy. How many fire energy do we have? Six, right? Uh, we can yeah. take a peek at that. I believe it is six. It seems to be the, the typical answer there. And yeah. once more, the Ultra Ball is to go uh, the Ultra Ball to go along with this, the Rotom V on that opening turn. Love that it. first instant charge is absolutely free, and we take those. <laughs> exactly. Last time it was uh, kind of sent away by an early Iono there, but anytime you can end your turn with three additional cards in the hand is going to set you up nice and neat for these future turns. Lots of Pokemon off that instant charge uh, draw there from Bastion. Oh, wait, that was a Nest Ball? Oh, no, we're seeing a Nest Ball. We see the no, Nest no, Ball no. for Robin. Yes, this is Nest Ball for Robin Schultz here now the, kicking the off this turn. Big piece missing from the last game is just see one of those yeah. as, as having the opportunity to, to find that resource when you use your V-Star ability. That can lead to a world's difference, uh, drawing some additional resources with the Mew, that one extra energy on board with the Teal Mask Ogre Pond, whatever it may be, even the additional uh, Reggie Drago so that you can be reckless with that initial one. It's super helpful. Well, we saw a quick look at the prize cards there for Robin Schultz's side of the field. Two key cards that were used at the very end of that game, that Luminion V as well as the boss's orders. It was used to search that out. Uh, so those are in the prize cards now until Robin Schultz has access to those down the line in this game. But after that Nest Ball to bring out an early Teal Mask Ogre Pond, which is essential for this deck to start accelerating pieces. And the Ultra Ball is going to have to discard two Pokemon here. The Dragon Pole, you want to see it in the discard pile so you can utilize its Phantom Dive attack off of Reggie Drago V-Star. What you're not as happy about is that Reggie Drago V-Star being in the discard pile. You'd love another attacker maybe going into the discard pile instead. Yeah, it's a worthy sacrifice to make, but yeah. sure enough, you do just that. And you see, Bastion thinks about these things, the, 60 damage, uh, the six damage counters that are placed down from that Dragapult, countered by the 70 hit points of the Charmander. Yeah. You just have to think about everything when you're building your deck, and uh, the worry of seeing a Pokemon like Dragapult attacking on the second turn it's pretty viable in a it deck is. like this. Absolutely it is. We've seen the energy switches there on Robin Schultz's side in this deck. We've seen the acceleration of those grass energy to the teal mask ogre ponds that are on the bench. We have a Reggie Drago V now on the bench as well for Robin, but you're totally right, Kyle. Especially with that legacy V-Star power, you can have all of those tools to pull off these incredible turns early on, but this time around, it's going to be the Prime Catcher now Ooh. bringing up that Rotom V here for Robin Schultz, as well as a, pro a Professor's Research going to get us into seven additional cards to the hand. Wow, look at the hand, too. Ooh. Just a little bit of everything. That's what you want to be cooking with here as a, a Drago player. And sure enough, it lines up just like that. The Earthen Vessel, an additional S Ball, the Ultra Ball if you want to discard some additional resources. And we still have a V-Star ability for the following turn. This could be a huge turn uh, for Robin on the next go of it. As we already saw the Prime Catcher, yeah, you can use it a little loosely here. You know you're going to grab it right back yeah. next turn. <laughs> exactly. You're going to put that right back into the hand, and that's a huge 
uh, part of this deck, being able to recycle those resources is just giant because all of these cards help you so much in this matchup as we saw. Fresh seven off that professor's research and now we are just rolling here. We see that Earthen Vessel discarding a Reggie Drago V as well. We already have another one on the bench. We're going to get these energy out and they're going to be accelerated straight away to draw some additional cards here. Uh, for Robin Schultz, and we might see this giant turn, and this is only our turn two here from Robin Schultz. This is how I like to see Reggie Drago play. Yeah, we saw the energy switch added to the hand as well. Just one of those resources that has to be involved in the combination to get the three energies onto the Reggie Drago to start things off. So all the pieces are slowly aligning. And yes, this is a quick pass of the turn. Wait to see what your opponent can do, yeah. but if they're not there, then surely you have the ability to get uh, pretty violent next turn. Yep, that is very true here, Kyle. We're going to see that energy switch over to the active position, Reggie Drago V. But over on Bastion's side, we're already seeing that Super Bonbon bon evolve that Pidgeot EX as well. So these are all pieces that are being pulled together now for Bastion. We have that quick search eligible as well uh, uh, for this turn, and that is pretty huge. So helpful there to find that Pokemon early on. Just continue to burn through the deck. Looks like uh, Arvin already initially thought of here before even going for the card itself as yeah. uh, the Forest Seal Stone and uh, Buddy Buddy Poffin are thrown to the top of the deck. Exactly. Oh, no, we have it on board here. Okay. <laughs> uh, you mean Pepper, right? Huh? Yeah, of course. Pepper being played here. Now, where's the Arvin. salt? We need the, <laughs> we need the combo here. Uh, hey, Pepper, salt. We got a, uh, a nice Buddy Buddy Poffin here <laughs> scooped up for Bastion. That's going to be the item card as well as a tool card um, in that Forest Seal Stone being uh, drawn out of the deck now. That's Buddy Buddy Poffin being played to establish the bench. We saw this in our last match here from Bastion. And we're seeing it again. And I mean, it, it pays off. Having all these resources toward the end of the game, um, especially when if you're on the back foot, you have all these cards in your deck where you can really catch up super well and uh, overtake your opponent if they're not able to find that recovery in their own deck. But we're going to see this Forest Seal Stone coming down. It's going to give that Rotom V a V-Star power. It didn't have one before, but now it has one. As long as it's a V Pokemon, you can use that Star Alchemy V-Star power to search out uh, an additional card to your hand as well. Yeah, at this point, what helps out in this spot? You've already seen, looks like plenty of a Pokemon added, and thankfully it is that Ooh, Charizard. Smooth, we didn't know smooth. if we were going to get to that point uh, here, and sure enough, it is there. I was worried that uh, all the Charmander could get wiped out next turn, but applying the pressure, adding this threat, is so important, and maybe Robin doesn't get an opportunity to wipe out the bench here. Has to think about that Charizard and get really aggressive early on. Yeah, this is the bread and butter here of Charizard EX. Everything is being established there for Bastion. That Charizard EX being evolved into Infernal Rain being activated to accelerate these energy onto the field. And look at that. The Reggie Drago V is so close to a knockout here. Just 40 HP left remaining there in the active position. Robin Schultz is going to have to uh, recover a bit here. We see a much more established bench than we saw in our previous game. We did see a Reggie Drago V and V Star already in the discard pile for Robin Schultz, but we still have one being evolved into for that active position. A little extra HP here. Now we're at only 100 left on that Reggie Drago, and we have it already loaded up with energy. Just needs one more to be able wow. to attack. <laughs> well, this hand was missing one thing and found it. It's just additional energies to go along with it. The question here is, do you want to take a risk? Do you want to play this energy on the active Pokemon, or do you continue to draw with the Teal Mask Ogre Pond, see yeah. an additional resource before the inevitable Iono, it looks like here? And uh, why not take a risk? You have the backup of your V-Star ability uh, to go along with this. Yeah, true. We haven't even activated that V-Star ability yet here. I'm excited to see how Robin Schultz chooses to use it in this game. But we have that heavily damaged Reggie Jago V-Star ready to attack. We, d we are going to see the Mew this time coming out. Yeah, Mew, thankfully, there in the hands to go along with this. A solid strategy where you could potentially see your opponent, or you, see, you could you could take the hand with the Ultra Ball, drop it down to zero, grab another Reggie Drago V-Star, and play that down, draw three additional resources after you use that Legacy Star. Y you could have a really solid hand to go along with that. Yeah, we got some nice supporter Pokemon here on this side of the field. 
Um, you can also be used as an attacker as well, somewhere down the line in some decks, but Iono is going to be used here now from Robin Schultz. Both these players, their hands are going to go to the bottom of their decks. They're going to draw six cards each for as many prize cards as they have remaining. A little safer here, and I think we can all agree that's probably a good call. Already up a game and looking for a few more resources, those energies especially, and it looks like the grass energy found along with that earthen vessel should be pretty helpful. Yeah, that's what you like to see here. All these energy being loaded up from Robin Schultz's side of the field here. Tons of cards off of that Iono that were drawn into. Are we going to see this Legacy V Star Power debating it? Is he going to flip that V Star token? You can only use one V Star per game. We're going to see it. Seven cards here being discarded from Robin Schultz. Oh, wow, lots that's... of. Them. A few attackers to go along with this, but we did see some resources like that Ultra Ball. I believe there's already one there, but the Prime Catcher is a card we always think about adding yep. back into the mix. Now the question is, do you already have access to a way to, to reach that knockout with the Raging Bolt? If not, then have to search out that Pokemon, combine that with the Earthen Vessel to get it into the discard pile. Yeah, that's where you have to start to put your pieces together here. Robin Schultz is able to recycle some of these resources, now drawing two cards back out of the discard pile after that V-Star power being utilized. But exactly what you said, Kyle, where do we go from here? Which attacker do we utilize here? And which other additional card, along with that Prime Catcher, do we draw out? Looks like it's going to be the Superior Energy Retrieval. I... Not sure if we officially have the count on it, but I think that all of the Reggie Drago V stars have been seen. As we had one early discard, the second discarded there off the legacy and one the active. That's that leads to some issues when you start to get some try to chain together some attacks later on. Uh, yeah, I think you're right about that, Kyle. It could lead to some issues down the line here for Robin Schultz because you need a lot of these uh, recovery cards to get these Pokemon back and get some attackers flying around here. But all these Reggie Draco Vista are, are gone uh, besides this one that's in the active here. Prime Catcher going to be used. That Rotom V brought up into the active. Of course, that Mew has that free retreat so that Reggie Draco Vista is able to just re-promote into the active position here from Robin Schultz. Oh, a lot to think about here. Gaming Tower going to come into play as our stadium here. Uh, those tools already been utilized there from Bastion, but that Rotom V, just like our last game, is going to go down nice and early here from that attack off the Phantom Dive being used off that Dragapult EX. We're going to see these damage counters come down as well from Robin Schultz. Six yep. damage counters. Robin says, uh, evolve these Pokemon as soon as you can. And pew, 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 you see all that added to the bench there. Wow. It's, it's a tricky spot. Of course, 30 damage added to the Pidgeot. Thinking about that Radiant Charizard wow. as a Pokemon that you can work into the mix while you're trying to find a way to potentially recover on some of these uh, Regidrago that have already fallen. What do you attack with at this point other than the, the Radiant Charizard? Yeah, that is tough. Oh, the first time we're going to see it here, that mochi coming out, that binding mochi being played down on mm. the field. We don't see any poison just yet, but that is the tool card being put onto Charizard EX here for some additional damage if it is poisoned. We already saw the Petrarunt come down in the last game that adds that poison to the Charizard EX. We'll see if that comes into play here from uh, Bastion, but not just yet because Tool cards are currently shut down from that jamming tower. Yeah, it looks pretty, but <laughs> it's not doing anything just yet. Not here. yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, there's so much to think about on Bastion's side. Your opponent, you've got, you have so much information by way of the discard pile at this yeah. point. If, if they don't have a way to get some of these Pokemon back, whatever it may be, a super rod or uh, what have you, you're in a difficult sp spot where... <laughs> You, you can see the attackers lined up, but you don't really want to use Radiant Charizard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Feels bad. Ultra Ball being used here to discard a jamming tower of his own here for Bastion, as well as that Petra Run going to the discard pile. Ultra Ball uh, searching out a Pokemon here for Bastion. Looks like it's just going to be a shuffle up to thin down this hand. It's, it's tricky to think about with already so much damage on board. 
You can knock out that Regidrago, but you're scared of the grass Pokemon here. So rightfully so, yeah. as going to identify that and take out a Teal Mask Overpon. Those energies, they stack up and uh, they, uh, they they take out Charizards pretty quick. It gets dangerous out there, Kyle. It gets dangerous. The counter catcher, as long as you're behind in prize cards, you can uh, promote one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active position. Like you said, Teal Mask Ogre Pawn with that grass typing and those energies adding up can be very dangerous here. So that's going to be in the active position now. We're going to see a Super Rod as well, bringing back that Petra Runt into the deck as well as a couple of energy cards for Bastion. Quick Search has already been used for this turn here for Bastion. Uh, Industries and Sizers already utilized. All the abilities being drawn out for Bastion so far here in this turn. We're going to see that retreat now into the Charizard EX. That Teal Mask Ogre Pawn going down. That is a knockout here on our field. And Bastion's going to go down two prize cards in that Radiant Charizard, as well as the Fire Energy being added into the hand. That's going to spice things up for this matchup. Our players are tied now. Two prize cards taken on both sides. Robin Schultz promotes that Mew EX that has that free retreat. You can change out to whatever you want in this turn. Let's see what happens here for Robin Schultz. What cards are going to be played here? Yeah, uh, honestly, the, the biggest prize cards right there to find that Radiant Charizard. An additional single prize Pokemon to work into the mix. Stay in the race here. It's going to yeah. be so big for Bastion, but there's four minutes remaining. Robin Schultz thinking about every potential opportunity here to close out this game. See as many cards as you can. Of course, you have that Flip the script to help out and I mean does the flip need, the script need to be flipped uh, here I mean, you're, yeah, you're sure. looking pretty good <laughs> maybe don't flip it yeah we'll, we'll flip it twice <laughs> so it's back on top yeah you want to flip it in your direction that's for sure but three additional cards either way there from that pheasant dippity after that knockout from Robin Schultz side of the field it's getting intense here three minutes 30 seconds left superior energy tree retrieval being the card played that Kyurem's finally going to hit the discard pile now oh. as well as a nest ball that single damage counter as well onto the Bibarel. you have to think about that yeah, too that's true it adds up just so nicely there for that Kyurem if it potentially wants to take a triple knockout this go around yeah, it's called Tri-Frost for a reason pew, pew, pew. in that Kyurem for sure. 110 damage to three of your opponent's Pokemon, and that is dangerous when you have all of these low HP Pokemon that have already been damaged from previous turns. So Robin Schultz going to uh, put down that Radiant Charizard onto the field as well. We've already seen several abilities being used for the turn. Now are we just going to lead into this Iono here for both of our players? It's going to be a tie as far as the cards being drawn for each for these players after their hands go to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, so much information that Robin has when using this card. Sees, what, eight cards that aren't boss's orders at this point. There's obviously the opportunity to draw into one of those that is in the prize cards, along with a Luminion. You think of all the resources that could potentially get you over that threshold to take that final prize card on the next turn, and doesn't see it just yet, but the, there is hope on the horizon. There is hope. Hey, when you're playing this deck, there's always hope there, unless you just discard everything you need off Lady CP Star. <laughs> <Don't worry>. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oh. Teal Mask Ogre Pond is going to be promoted uh, after that free retreat on that Mew EX. Once more, there's that opportunity there to, to, to wipe out a lot of resources, but take out the threat. Force your opponent to establish another threat once more has been the plan for Robin all the way through. And sure, if the Reggie Drago's not targeted next turn, you have that opportunity to clean up if all these Pokemon aren't evolved. Woo, well, it is getting down to the wire here now, Kyle. That was huge here from Robin Schultz. Two prize cards left to take in this game with only uh, just over a minute left here. Bastion's going to have to decide what to do after that giant Charizard EX being knocked out by that Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX with that grass weakness on that Terra type Pokemon. And I mean, it's Myriad Leaf Shower is a huge move here. It's not just a support Pokemon with that Teal Dance. That's 30 damage for each energy that's attacked to not only your active Pokemon, but your opponents as well. Yeah, it, it starts to add up, especially in this matchup. That grass weakness can be terrifying, and it's, it is one of the bigger threats that you have to work around. As 
you're, you're focused solely on that Reggie Drago in so many other matchups, but sure enough yeah. here, it does work. It works indeed. Well, we have that uh, Pidgeot EX in the active position, a little bit damaged here, Ultra Ball being played. This is the second time we're seeing, that's the Petron, right? Or is that Pesantipity? Uh, one the of the two. Card. Yeah, well, it they is, look very similar. It is <laughs> Ultra Ball gonna get out that Charizard EX now, coming back to the field here if we have that uh, rare candy, but it's going to be the the Charmeleon as yeah. well coming out for Bastion. Yeah, I mean, we saw this uh, there from last last turn for Bastion, so we have both options, but that Super Bond Bond evolving that Charizard EX on the bench here now. That little HP uh, Charmander is now a full-blown, very angry Charizard EX, Infernal Rain being utilized, that ability for the turn. It looks like our judges have just alerted our players that time has been called. That means there's going to be three additional turns in this match. You see that signified under or over top of the, the time counter there, as yeah. we know that we are now on the unofficial turn zero as we move forward in this game. Robin becomes turn one, and of course, with two prize cards left, he'd like to end it right there. Yeah, we see the Kapow there knocking out that Pokemon down to two prize cards here for Bastion, getting the Prime Catcher and the Nest Ball from the prize cards. And Robin Schultz is over here with the Mew EX in the active position. Plenty of cards to be played. Earthen Vessel is going to start us off here, discarding that Professor's Research. And we're going to search out some energy cards from the deck. Two basic energy. Yeah, at this point, maybe just the one as a way to thin, uh, place that energy anywhere as... It doesn't matter anymore. You don't have any teal mass to continue yeah. to accelerate. They've all been your main attacker somehow. <laughs> <laughs> somehow. <laughs> now they're gone at this point. Robin says, I don't even need this energy. It's probably going to yeah. be that Mew drawing as many cards as possible to help That's out true. in this situation. Yeah, that restart ability is nice and tidy here for Robin Schultz. Being able to discard these cards with that Earthen Vessel, discarding the Professor's Research to get your hand size down just enough so you can draw up with the restart until you have three cards in your hands. That All energy being right. placed to the Radiant Charizard. Three cards here for Robin Schultz. What do we see? Boss's Orders is found. Wow. Off the three cards, Radiant Charizard lined up perfectly for that knockout. 250 damage is going to be it. And Robin Schultz is taking a round one victory here at the World Championships. Hey, that is just an incredible way to line up this round one here at Worlds. Robin Schultz, a former world champion, taking things down with a clean 2-0 and putting Reggie Drago V-Star officially on the map here at Worlds. Now, what a way to get the job done. Nice and simple. We saw a few of those different attacks that could be copied, but yeah. no uh, no Shrouded Fable shenanigans <laughs> that, that yes, went on yes. this time around. I was really looking forward to Akiram once or twice, but uh, no know. dice. <laughs> it was, we were very close to that pile, very, very close, <laughs> but hey, maybe we'll see if we have an action-packed build weekend, but I am excited that we, we are now done with our round one. Can you believe it, Kyle? Yeah. Robin Schultz taking down this this first 